All right, everyone, we are back. Thank you all for your patience during our midstream intermission. And we are currently on def 10 with a shaky charm build that looks like it might be shaping up into something, but there's still probably some rough roads ahead. I feel like it might be a good opportunity to make make some observations and some raise some maybe discussion points here. So when you're investing into a charm like this from the get go, and we already looked at the curve where like it doesn't get effective until like pretty high in chance. So you can't get a lot of like uses out of the like one thing you're committing to, which obviously makes the game difficult. So at what point is it worth diverting those enchants to other places? That makes that curve like a little softer by giving you other useful tools to, to take advantage of during that that low point where your your charm isn't like strong enough. But it also means it takes longer until your charm is like really strong. Like on this build, I wonder if I'm supposed to enchant like obstruction like once at some point. Which actually gives us like a lot more uses of obstruction. Mid level invis charm is super good if you can take the average fight without needing invis. That's a good point too. And this build is pretty close to like being decent in combat. We have a war pike we can almost use and a banded male that is not unenchanted or like negatively enchanted. So that's interesting. I think the war pike being only at plus zero might start falling off here soon though. With obstruction, there's consideration to split enchants between both. Potentially use obstruction to recharge and viz. Yeah, I, I really like the idea of enchanting obstruction. I, I think I'm gonna do that. Diverting like at least one or two scrolls into it feels pretty strong. Our invis charm is actually only at 104 turns of recharge. Man, it drops to 74 next. I'd love to get this to plus six. I think it's done like 50 at plus seven. So our invis charm is actually like on the up. But yeah, I think getting like one or two more enchants into obstruction becomes pretty good. Because right now obstruction takes a while to enchant. If we enchanted this once or twice, we could probably like alternate using obstruction and invisibility charm a lot just to avoid or like take care of most encounters. Because obstruction is really strong. So another um, observation is that as strong as invisibility is, I don't know how viable it is late game. And probably we're talking about like past the amulet death with just a war pike, uh, a non-enchanted war pike, because this actually doesn't do a ton of damage. Like we're not going to be like one shotting horrors or dragons, which means like even after we use our invis charm, like and get a sneak attack, we're kind of screwed. So we almost need to find a broadsword or a, like a warhammer to like really excel at those later deaths, I think. I don't know, I've never really tried this before, so I don't really know how that plays, but that's how it, I feel like it's gonna go in my head so far. Plus zero war pike is fine for invisible with proper support, which might mean blinking. Yeah, so if you can get multiple sneak attacks on one enemy, then that becomes pretty strong. So blinking or haste is pretty sweet. If you sneak attack something, it's off balance. I did not know that. I noticed that with the ogre earlier. I didn't realize. So every time, if you sneak attack a wandering enemy, it's going to be off balance. That actually makes a huge difference. Because, yeah, when you do walk, if you can create space, 
That does two things. You can back up and if you keep walking on a diagonal, they'll forget about you eventually. Or if it's like a dragon, you can back up and then obstruct them and keep a tile between you and them. Interesting. And that actually makes it very viable in my mind. Not a deal, but certainly viable. So if I look up Warpike, it does 11 to 15 damage, 13 average. So we're doing like 36, 39 average on a sneak attack. That kills most things, but not horrors and not dragons, which are like the two things I'm always really concerned about late game. Cool. Well, let's see where this run goes. We haven't found any rings yet. There's a lot of things that could really like shift the kind of like the the options for this build greatly. Well, I found the exit for this floor already. It's a wandering ogre. See if it comes this way. <laughs> Another wandering ogre. Hunting ogre. I get it to swap to wandering. Nope, still hunting. Thirty-two percent chance to hit. So I'm going to use either obstruction or invisibility here. If I use invis, it's hard to get away from this guy because he'll be adjacent next turn. I think we obstruct, let him wander back, and we deal with him later. Yeah, I feel like we can start getting a lot of value out of obstruction, or we're going to want to start getting a lot of value out of obstruction on this build. I think an enchantment of destruction would be pretty good. Invis allows you to drop aggro after they knock you back. Yeah, I just don't want to take too many hits from a, an ogre. Man, I still only have had two life potions. I wonder if we missed one on that, that floor where we only explored like 95% of it. That would, that would feel bad. There could just be a stack waiting for us in the next couple of floors. We're probably due for like two of them here in the next floor or two. So I'm wondering if I should enchant my obstruction char staff right now to start getting... I'm, I'm down two charges on this. I think I will. I like the idea of enchanting that a lot. So the spider's hunting. If I go in Viz, the spider's just going to attack my mystic with a web. I'm gonna move to the right. And then maybe I can kill it through the mystic. I don't know if this is a good plan or not. There's a chance that this ogre ends up walking to the left before this crystal dissolves, depending on the RNG here, which would be annoying too. Am I supposed to go invis here and kill the spider? That might be a decent option. Let's just do it. Okay, the ogre went to the right. 
The spider forgot about me. He didn't care about the mystic, though, which is really weird. And now I'm just doing with the spider again. Enemies don't aggro on allies. Interesting. Semi cheese um, with having allies attack wandering enemies by seeing out a line of sight. Yeah, that does sound useful. You probably do a lot of stuff like that with obstruction. Speaking of obstruction, I don't want to deal with you right now. Time to start taking a lot of staff notes. So the ogre is to the right. There he is. I was hoping to get to the door for a sneak attack. Still wandering. So I'll take the sneak attack. Hundred percent chance to hit the ogre. Oh, he's in a web. Yeah, he's stuck. Okay, this is great. Why does the mystic walk in front of him? The mystic keeps walking onto webs. Oh my god. This mystic has a wand. Uh oh. Oh god. That's not great. I guess we'll see what happens with that alarm trap. Is that the spider? Is there an exit to the north of this room? I guess so. Pretty sweet if I could kill him through a goblin. Yeah, the mystic is carrying right now. How far they've come. I don't know what y'all think, but I think that's pretty. Hopefully they nerf allies again. Um, there was actually a discussion about allies in the the development discord. Oh, what killed the mystic? Oh, he's attacking through me. Well, the mystic, the mystic just deserved that, I guess. It's annoying though. But yes, yeah, so someone posted on the GitHub about increasing the generation odds of empowerment um, and they, they basically said they played like 30 seeds and never found one which honestly doesn't sound like a great reason in Brogue to increase the generation odds of something um, I was curious so I actually looked at the, the seed catalog and I think in a thousand seeds in this version of CE there was like 113 empowerment wands and I just like searched for a few other items. I looked at like blinking stabs. There was like 300 of them. And I think some of the other ones like teleport and polymorph, there was like two to 300 of them. Um, but I think what they were decided to do was, and this might've been committed already, um, reverting the empowerment generation odds to the 174 levels. So it basically goes from 1% to 4 or 2%. It, it doubles. Which isn't big in the grand scheme of things. 
This is 4% base, I think, as far as wands go. Um, so it goes from 4 to 8. That actually is kind of big, looking at all the other wands. And then these all drop down by a percent or two. Yeah, because all the wands... The, the generation numbers are all 1 to 3. And then it's like relative. So empowerment is 1 right now, along with domination. And then like slowness, polymorph, negation, beckoning, invisibility is 3. So you raise empowerment to 2. It's a... Relatively big increase. Um, part of the discussion was whether... Well, the question was raised whether they should double the chances of... The, the generation odds of all ally wands, which I guess is these three. Plenty, Invisibility, Empowerment. Wait, that wouldn't make any sense. Invisibility would be, like, through the roof. I don't know. I don't mind them doubling empowerment that much. I don't think that makes like a huge difference in the grand scheme of things. Um, but also, I'm like, I have a slightly like, not anti-ally, but less ally slant in CE. So I'm probably always like slightly favoring reducing ally items and generation. Um, but Pender actually made a an interesting case there for about allies, and he said the gist of it was um, allies have an annoying AI in that when their their builds are common and viable, then a lot of players feel forced to play ally builds, even if they don't enjoy it. Um, and his stance was kind of that if you want to play an ally build, you should probably just use the seed catalog and that they shouldn't be so common that people like are forced to play them often, especially in like weekend contests and stuff. And um, they said if uh, that they would like probably prefer that even CE ally generation be t scaled back a bit closer to what it was in 175. So I thought that was interesting. And I probably agree with all of those points. Hey, welcome, Zen. We were kind of talking about the, the ally wand discussion that happened in the development discord recently. If you're just tuning in. Just finish the seed or you would have been here earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah, welcome. I hope you did well on your run. You think CE ally gen seems ideal at the moment? So... I'm hesitant to make many comments about allies in general. I feel like when I talk about how I feel about allies, it's from like a an uneducated like standpoint because I haven't had enough exposure to to allies and to CE yet. That's just how I feel right now. Um, how I feel with allies right now in Brogue though is that you can find certain allies that are like if you find an ogre like early-ish. Or like a pairing, like a mystic and like a just a goblin or something. It feels really strong. And I feel like allies don't fit in into brogue like a lot of other pieces of brogue fit in. And that's kind of what bugs me a bit. Because like allies to me feel like consumables that last for like many encounters. And some allies are just garbage. So that part is awkward too. You know what I was wondering is what if allies that captive allies were um, reduced in their like relative level for that depth, so you always found weaker allies, but all the ally stabs and wands became much stronger. Not empowerment, I guess. That would make like healing haste protection a lot more dangerous to use against enemies, and then more synergistic with allies. I haven't really thought that through too much, but that was one random idea I had. It would be an interesting way to change ally balance a bit. But also that would mean that most allies you find probably don't feel good at all if you don't have one of these items. Um, the other thing I was wondering is what if empowerment could only like, there was like a cap on how strong you can make an ally with empowerment. And maybe it's based on how strong the ally is to begin with. So like stronger allies have like a higher cap, but you couldn't have like these uber allies that you just dump like 15 empowerment charges into by the end of the game. 
And then maybe you have to tweak the balance of like how it increases their attack and health and stuff. But that's another interesting way to go about it. But um, I don't know. Ultimately, I want to experiment with allies more just to kind of like hone in on how I, I feel about them overall and where they, they ex should exist in Brogue's game space to me as my perspective as one player. Um, and that's why I'm still playing a lot of 175 and a lot of CE because the ally change is one of the biggest difference between those two outside of all the great quality of life and bug fixes, of course. Um, but that's one like balance issue that I really want to learn better. By the way, I'll tease this. Last week I was experimenting with speedruns and I found in 1.75 a D1 vault with a, an empowerment wand in it. So I saved that and whenever we have a non-weekend contest stream, I want to play that seed and take empowerment and see if we can play an ally build in 1.7.5. Now I've had seeds of 1.7.5 where you don't find like any allies, so I don't know if we're actually going to get a, a good seed for that, but I think that'll be fun to try. And that, however that goes, that could give me a lot of, you know, good data on how ally builds play. Um, so if I ever splat one of these uh, weekend contests, maybe we'll get to try that. Or if I get some time on a Sunday or, or outside of our weekend contest that I've been doing. Um, let me read some of this back scroll. Um, Tread said they come at allies from two perspectives. They hated the 174 ally meta. <clears throat> you like the death of tactics and boosting early wizard builds. You used to find two times nag on D7 commonly. It was obnoxious. Now, how common is something like that in... In one seven or in CE right now, did the the level of allies change in CE or just the generation rate? Using red red stabs on enemies doesn't seem very risky in practice right now. Yeah, it doesn't. I feel like if you find like an early ogre, and this is going back to like where I was saying like they can be like really helpful in a run, and they're like kind of like long term consumables. It can, like, like imagine if we had, like, a strong ally on this run. And I probably wouldn't be into, like, so many hairy situations. And even the Mystic gave us a ton of value throughout, like, many different fights. Even though it's not, like, that great of an ally for the build we have right now. But it made us, like, not fear vampire bats, which we would have been fearing. Haven't had any uber allies in CE yet. You got like 20 lumens with them in one seed, but that's it. If you can keep them from getting discorded, then they can be very strong. Yeah, allies are definitely very dangerous. Um, or it's it's risky because it traps in discord. Like, or if they die, then your, your whole build's kind of out the window. I don't know. I kind of like the use of allies as like... Uh, Basically a consumable that might help you out for a couple of floors and then you move on from them. Like building like hardcore around allies just doesn't seem very appealing to me and it also doesn't feel very broguish to me. Wouldn't that seed have something similar in CE? Um, I don't think so, Arch. It'll have a vault there, but I think the items will be different. Because um, the level generation is different in CE. So a lot of things change. Like two seeds aren't really comparable. Smog says maybe make allies unable to regen naturally. Um, I don't know. Maybe they can regen slower or something. They'd have to regen naturally because of how you get them at low health. And otherwise, they... Well, that does make them, like, single-use consumables <laughs> in that manner. They'd only last, like, a fight or two. I feel like that might not feel good to the player. It's a weird balance between having, like, game mechanics that are balanced, but also, like are fun to use and like don't feel bad to the player. 
Now the thing with balancing games and like changing balance in like a patch is that players' perception of how balance changes is a different thing than how balance actually changes in a game. I remember I used to be like really into Overwatch for like two years. Um, this is before like I got like heavy into back into roguelikes again. This is maybe like five to seven years ago at this point. Um, I remember they they changed soldiers, one of the characters, bullet damage by like one point. Or maybe, maybe they said they sh they wanted to change it by one point, but they felt like it would change the player perception too much, and that like people wouldn't use it at all. So what they did instead was like reduce their fire rate and leave the damage the same, and they just admitted straight up, they're like if I if I change the damage on this, it's it's what the game would play better as, but players would stop using it because they would like over perceive what this balance difference is and stop using it, which was like a really interesting point to make. And that's a game like with a very competitive, um, you know, environment and game balance, and, and they updated the game like every week or two. And I don't know if there's an, a factor of that going from 174 to 175. Although there's probably like more truth than in 175. Allies are really rare in 175. I almost like it that way in my experience with the runs game so far. Many games seem to have shitty balance because the player base is too large and vocal. Something roguelikes mostly manage to avoid. Yeah. That, that is absolutely true. One way around meta reactions versus actual balance fixes is to not announce them immediately. That is sneaky. <laughs> Wait, so let people play something without telling them what's different? Something about that seems like morally dubious. I mean, there's nothing like immoral about that, but like, I, it feels like um, it's deceptive, I guess. And, and players probably don't like that either. And they want to know what's different about the game they're playing. And if they know you're changing things without telling them, you're going to get so many like reports about like something getting changed that like just didn't change. It's funny when people play variants of games and they're like always asking like if something changed. Or like even in like a game like Cogmind, like players might ask like, did you like up the generation rate of hunters in this patch? Like this is crazy. And it's just based on like a small sample size. And that hack would call that variant paranoia. The materials get harder, exactly. Yeah, you can leave out concrete details, and some games do 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 that. You could say that something was slightly decreased in effectiveness and not give hard values. I don't know. That kind of stuff like fascinates me. Um, short story for like me though is that I'm I want to keep playing ally builds to see how I or like the game and see like get more data points for my own gameplay to see how I feel about allies. But right now, my perception is that I don't think they they work. I don't know. I they don't fit Brogue as a lot to me right now, and I feel like they could be overhauled in a way that fits Brogue better. However, that is, and that I think even though allies suck a lot of the times and like die easy or like get discorded, I think in general on a number of seeds when there's a lot of like ally generation you can get allies that kind of carry you through a few floors and that can make a huge difference as far as like sa like saving up consumables and enchant scrolls and stuff minus eight mats has always had the potential to be a nightmare and players um, just don't commonly encounter it before exiles i think it was like really easy to get into like bad assault spirals on minus or uh alert spirals on minus eight I actually used to have like the most trouble in materials in any other point in the game. Like legitimately. Like things can just go so poorly there if you like get into a bad situation. And, and like you don't have a lot of core or a lot of like good items or integrity. Like um, minus eight could get out of hand a lot. Now with exiles, if you go into the caves and go to exiles, which most players do, you pretty much always enter minus eight with like no alert. 
It's not nearly as bad. You do like Pender's current take on it. It's better than the previous design. It's unfortunate that ally builds are sort of weak at the moment. Yeah, I'm really curious. I, I have a lot of faith in um, the CE development team. Like, I think TME is fantastic at like filtering ideas and making good decisions um, to the game. Um, I think Pender has just been like really great at identifying like um, things that can be made, made like improved and how to improve them in the game since he's been back, which has been really cool to see. Um, it makes me like just a lot of confidence in developers when you see stuff like that. Just slept through a few hours of the stream. Um, hey, what's up, Dragon? DL Dragon. You saying you don't like allies, but want to play ally, play an ally build? What's the context? Um, well, I just, I don't like making comments on things that I don't understand as much as I, or that I could understand better. So that's why I want to play them. And a dedicated ally build might be a fun thing to play once. It's something I've never done before. And honestly, builds like, not even just like an ally build, but builds in general can be fun to play, but can be bad for the game. Like Cogmine has that problem with all these like OP builds. Like these OP like flight builds were like kind of bad for the game and they got nerfed, but players loved them, or at least like a subset of players. And when they did get nerfed, the salt was flowing. Let me tell you. The track record for CE has been rather excellent so far. Here, here. I agree with that. Well, now I don't have my Mystic, so I don't know how we're going to do fighting this stuff. Probably fine. I'd like to kill the spider. Nice, I hit the spider once. Oh, he just webbed me. He webbed me on the diagonal. This is actually a dangerous place to run into a spider. Do I use this in my invis charm here? So the spider goes wandering before I kill this goblin? I think I might. It's at 98%. I'm gonna let the goblin attack me. Oh, it's hasted? I probably don't wanna let it attack me too long. Salvo of four times totems incoming. Oh, that could be disgusting too. I, at least I can obstruct them. I'm gonna go invisible. Okay, I might just die to a goblin. Holy cow. Okay. We're invisible and we're just dying right now. <laughs> How am I not killing the goblin? Oh, it's because it's it was uh it was shielded. So the goblin dies 100% next turn. It won't wander from the diagonal. Really? It's out of my stealth range. So I guess I gotta like back up on a diagonal to get to wander like in between me like like in that one tile on a diagonal between you and an enemy during the turn you move. So the spider's hunting right now. I feel like we obstruct here. And then I might end up teleporting the spider. I didn't want to teleport the spider and then I get quadruple zapped by totems, which might actually kill me. Which is why I did it like this. Um, this did get me unstuck. Does that remove the webs? It doesn't, right? That's weird how that gets me unstuck. You're not sure how the adjacent diagonal works when standing still? Interesting. I guess the webs are fragile, so they'll fall apart. 
Okay, because I thought running away from a spider with webs and obstruction is going to be annoying. Can I kill the spider with darts at this point? What is their health? I searched spider on the brogue wiki, and there's like a, in a sidebar, a search result for a related wiki, and it says, so I'm a spider, so what, wiki? Which is kind of hilarious just to think of a brogue spider, like, thinking that. Um, spiders have 20 health. So this one has about 12, 13 health left. Could probably take like the rest of my darts to kill it. That might be worth it. My darts are pretty low value at this point. And that saves us a teleport charge. I'm game. Okay, I'll just miss the spider five times in a row. That's cool, too. <laughs> the spider's still webbing me. Just swap to hunting. Okay, so I'm out of crystal. The spider's in crystal. I died of this in a straight up fight. Yeah, I guess we teleport the spider. Doesn't feel good. Okay, so there's a door here. So even though there's a web here, I don't get fried by these things. I gotta make a mad dash for this gold at some point. And my darts if I want them. ETA until the spider comes back to the left seven turns? Probably. Oh, that's a wraith. That is a wraith. Here to ruin our day. It's stuck. Why aren't there more webs here so I could like get this guy stuck at a position where I could zap it with or stab it with my spear? My Warpike would own this thing if it was in a web. Oh, they get unstuck twice as fast? Here we go. Oh, shoot. That's right, they get stuck on unstuck twice as fast. Are we teleporting the Wraith now, too? <laughs> and then the crystal to the right disappears and I die immediately? Is that how this game is played? Where did all of our health go? All right, I guess we're teleporting stuff. Again, we only have 50 health right now, which is low for this point of the game. This is the same run as when the stream started. Yep. And 
Indeed it is. So I would like to heal. Going here, heal me. That's a wraith. Should I try killing the wraith in a spider web again? Uh, no, neither of these potions are life. Is there blood wear on the prior level? I don't think so. I feel like I'm supposed to lure the wraith in this spider web and try to kill them. As poorly as that just went for us. Um, at best, we could defeat it in three hits. I guess I don't have the damage output to do that. Invis Charm is not ready. You mean I don't screenshot every level to check for blood work positions? If I weren't streaming and I were trying to play super optimally, I would screenshot every level for blood work positions and chasm positions. If I were trying to like streak or something, that would totally be something I'd do. The ground gives way is nice because it gives you a map of floors with terrain features. I feel like it's been suggested before, but I'd love to see um, Community Edition add something where you could like peek at floors above and below you. Kind of like how um, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup does it. NetHack 4 has that? Oh, I didn't know that, actually. I played NetHack 4 and I didn't know that. Also, welcome, Jonah Dab. Maybe some technical barriers to overcome first. Yeah, the way that, like... Um... Like, recordings and stuff work in Brogue makes me feel like it would be very difficult to look at other floors. I'm just going to chill here for a while. Let's bloat the bloat. Cloud of caustic gas sprays upward from the floor. The bloat bursts, leaving behind an expanding cloud of caustic gas. Oh my god, now I can't get to the stair if something shows up. Recordings just re-simulate the game from canned input. Yeah. I really wish it was easier to go back a turn in a recording. Yeah, there's a safe room. I should probably go there while... Uh... Waiting for this gas to, to do its thing. I have a little bit of health now. And how many charges do we think on the... Re the... What was that, 250? Probably like two charges on my obstruction. All right, I think I might be able to safely start moving. We peek at the wraith again. It's still low health. It's now hunting. So it gets freed next turn. And I still can't one-shot it. 
It'll start fleeing though. Nice. I was supposed to move up left. Although if I moved up left, it might have gone down. I could have killed it while I was playing. Have fun fighting that Wraith again. I know. Wraiths are so annoying. Oh, Wandering Spider. Wandering the wrong way, apparently. I gotta walk past this room again. Let's see what the spider does. It's like they can smell the sneak attack, I know. I think I obstruct in here. Oh, there's a web? Okay, still good. Need our darts. Well, I mostly wanted the gold and not to get zapped by lightning four times with this much health. Just walking back by the door. I guess I didn't have to finish that search after seeing this trigger. the spider went this way I guess not need our darts for the wraith I don't know if I could hit it yeah there can be more triggers in a room this size I probably could have walked over here and then searched again it's a little more rare for there to be more than one trap in a room though wait can there be more triggers for one set of events or is there two separate pairs of paralysis traps because I always thought it was the latter. Spider. Damn it. Wait, where'd the Wraith show up to? The Wraith must have been over here. Am I getting greedy with these sneak attacks? I'm like out of obstruction now. I was probably supposed to use Invis in one of those points instead of keep using my obstruction. I played that wrong. I'm not used to this build yet. I'm supposed to be using Invis pretty liberally. We get it every 100 turns, which is pretty solid. Spider should maybe be dead already. Hey, give me a break. Um, here's a vamp bat. I don't know if they kill us anymore. I think we do already against vamp bats. That time we definitely did. Blind zap the wand. So we were talking about risk earlier. And one thing I don't like doing is taking an action that can kill you. Like by that action alone. Even if it's a very small chance. And I don't like zapping wands that can turn things potentially into a dragon, no matter how rare it is. It's kind of my philosophy with un unidentified wands.
The mob isn't hunting. The polymorph into a dragon doesn't kill you. Oh, so you polymorph it while it's wandering at a distance? And then what? If it is a, if it turns into a dragon, we can obstruct it and walk away. Wraith is now hunting. And he's in my way. Polymorph it again. You're more likely than not to get something you don't want to see from Polymorph at this point in the game, especially with our build. If it's already hunting, the dragon would instantly roast you. Now, enemies can swap from wandering to hunting on the action, the turn you that you take an action, and then they can make an aggressive hunting action during that turn as well. So if they're in your stealth radius and you do that, you could still get fried by a dragon, right? I just supposed to invis here. Oh shoot, I didn't want to attack it. I wanted to to walk onto this tile and just walk past him. <laughs> okay, well maybe I do just try to kill him now. There we go. This charm to the rescue. Wrecked by spear pattern. I know, I forget about that all the time. Yeah, spear pattern in Invis is pretty awesome in general. Because of the diagonals, the, the short line of sight. Well, do you get a double stab? Or is attacking something swatch, swip, switch it to hunting? I guess you do get a double stab. A splint mail. And a net trap. It's not cursed. my bandit at 321 more turns well, let's equip the bandit again I think we can just we can definitely ditch this bandit sneak attack mobs are hunting and off balance immediately but you can drop aggro again okay invisibility charm is recharged man that feels good Oh, that's a freaking dar. The dar pack. I'm near lava where my stealth range is bad. What's star blink range? Uh, that's a good question. I assumed it was if they can see you. Can't even like obstruct like one point because of this. Mm. 
I'll just wait here and see if they come this way. Well, I think kill him. 28% chance to kill. Those odds aren't amazing. So we're going Viz again. Why are you still hunting me, dude? Now they're both hunting. <laughs> so if I move bottom left, we've learned that on diagonals they can't lose aggro. If I move down, they might swap to... Actually, this one's never going to move swap out of hunting. Unless I move on a diagonal, so I can't. I don't have a path right now where both of these will 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 swap to wandering, which means we're probably looking at using our obstruction charm again, or obstruction staff. Or if I take a hit or two, there's probably a path where I can like. Let's see. Do you like this? No, nope, they're both hunting. They are both hunting. Do I roll on the 28% chance? This one could forget about me still too. On the low ground, yeah. Dar to the the brogue player. Don't do it. I have the high ground. Um. Now nah, I use my fire immunity and I use levitation by accident even though I knew what it was. <laughs> yes, you underestimate my 28%. 28% of the time it works all the time. I think obstruct is a safe play here. If I obstruct, these guys both probably wander off. Throw darts at this guy to finish him off. Uh, now we let them wander. I might get a sneak attack later. Um, guys, please go somewhere else. And why are you hunting? I guess because the diagonal. In a way that obstruction time or slash two has the most synergy with the charm. That's actually an interesting point about having. Although, in my experience, obstruction slash two has two random of crystal generation, and it might not do what you want it to, which is concerning. Zapping in the open, yeah. Why is this guy hunting still? I'm afraid of double tapping my rest key when one of these crystals goes away. Oh, he's still hunting.
So maybe I was supposed to throw daggers. Okay, we survive this. I'm gonna go for the sneak attack here. Dude. Really? Feel the wrath of my brute force. Oh, now this freaking spider is over here again. The spider just needs to like get out of my way. That's some good 28 percenting. Two hits in. Six attacks. Yeah, not bad. Gotcha. All right. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I would say we owned this floor. On to the next one. Longest D10 ever. I was wondering if we'd end up climbing over lava. Web over lava to get away. That would be a little scary. Chasm. Tempted to yeet thyself. Stop that. Turret. Another incineration pot. It's like the fourth one this seed. Dar with the telepathy potion. This room we just avoid, right? I better not have like a secret door over here. The ogre's not standing over everything. But this corner could have so many things. I'd have to burn invisibility to kill this thing, because we can't kill it in one sneak attack. The corner is tempting. I've been burned by not checking single tiles. That I, I really do want to check them pretty often. And it probably makes more sense on strong builds than the build I have now. I probably need to take calculated risk where we don't like look on one tile. No, we don't die to this ogre. I think using invisibility here if we had to to kill it isn't that bad. This does recharge pretty fast now and we have obstruction. Screw it, we're killing the ogre. Okay, great, it's hunting. Wait, you're not allowed to be hunting still. Dude, how does invis work? All right, smack me back. God, you do a ton of damage to me though. Yeah, I could have lured him to the gas. That would have been a solid play actually. I'm not invis anymore. This charm sucks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The charm's pretty good, but our, our build has a few issues. Dude, what was that obstruction? I guess it worked, but man, it, it like 
recoiled back at us pretty hard. There's the Blade Master. Trying to play its corners. Okay, so we actually can't survive a Blade Master without getting a sneak attack. Probably supposed to obstruct this on sight, right? I think enchanting the obstruction charm was the right play. Oh my god, you're still hunting me? Stop it. I don't know if I have more obstruction right now. What does the math say? Maybe that one tile did have the death of the run on it? Maybe. I can't roll it anything out. Yeah, I don't think I have obstruction charges right now. Um, where does that leave us? Maybe I drink my potion of invisibility? It's pretty low value when you have a charm, right? Just use what we have. Incineration is decent. Although, does incineration kill the Dar from full health? Not really, right? Yeah, and Vizpok is a free kill in the turret. I was just thinking that. Another way to think of that pot pushing of Invis is a one time buff to the charm. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Like if you use the charm and it doesn't last long enough for like one encounter, then you could use the the potion, which is pretty um, compelling. Let it blink in the grass. Yeah, but then we burn. I actually think I'm just going to use the potion. It's almost worth using this potion of telepathy right now while I have like a bunch of invisible turns. I might be able to take advantage of it. Although this actually only lasts for like what, like 20 or 30 turns or something? Or I might have like 20 turns left. I don't know how long it lasts actually. Okay, there's a secret door over here somewhere. This is plain banded mail. We can ID our splint. Oh no, there's a door right here.
75 turns. That's actually pretty good. Thanks for uh, checking. Is that information on the wiki? That is good knowledge. Uh oh. Cossack gas. You get a whole research staff standing by. <laughs> At first I thought you were talking about like a brogue staff and I was trying to think of what you meant by that in regards to obstruction, but <laughs> that's funny. Grep is a hell of a drug. Yeah, I I don't know the the organization of the Brogue code base that well yet. I've 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 been dipping my toes into it a little bit, so at some point I'll be able to look up stuff better. But also like I try not to look up a ton of stuff on the wiki. And sometimes I'll throw out like a question like that. that I I'm curious about, but don't necessarily need to know the answer to. Because obviously I will look something up if I feel like it's essential. It's pretty nice when people can confirm things or can answer questions like that. Um, so I could use the Staff of Obstruction Charge to get rid of this gas right now. Or I could just walk away from it and then we probably end up at like 70% health maybe. That's probably the better move. And then we just use Obstruction to block off anything else that might threaten us while we're at low health. Oh my god, a life potion. Give that to me. A wandering zombie. I'm supposed to incinerate that, right? Uh, not with all that gas. I get a sneak attack? No. I'm afraid of burning up a scroll over here, so I'm pulling this guy out a bit, and then I'm probably just gonna use incineration. Okay, this looks pretty good. Oh, uh, don't drink it. So I was going to obstruct this, but then the zombie's probably going to walk over here, right? I supposed to just like let this guy follow me for a bit. Here's the ogre again. Oh my god, and a blade master? Okay, the ogre is now hunting. This charm. wandering but I'm no longer invisible. And back to hunting. 32% chance to hit. And I can't one shot it. Um I probably just trade the health for trying to kill this. Easy. I'll take that trade any day. Okay, the zombie finally died.
Lead it into caustic gas. Um, so this gas, I can't, I would have had to take damage as well. Um, that was definitely an option. But speaking of traps, maybe I get this Darblade Master in one of these traps. Can I even throw that far? Will Juan go that far? Will this tell me... Yeah, the Juan will do that. So I can either confuse it, and maybe it walks into lava eventually. And if I confuse it, it's probably going to step on the confusion trap. I think I'd like Caustic Gas here. Oh, I should confuse it and then dunk it in Caustic Gas. It just blinks out. Oh yeah, enemies do that, don't they? It would blink out of either of those, right? I remember that time I tried to, I, I confused an imp and it just ran away. But the imp was fleeing. This is wandering. I don't know how they behave. Okay, I'm just gonna ignore it. There's another freaking zombie here. Of course you're hunting the turn that I can hurt you. This game. Would be nice if the blink destination is random. Yeah, but then would that apply to the player? Because I don't like—I don't know if I like the side effect of that. But what about a second zombie? Oh man! And there's the dar. Viz Charm not ready. Dar hunting. Potion of life in tow. If I had enchanted the Invis Charm, it would be recharged by now. I need to get more enchants into that thing. I think our obstruction staff is in a pretty decent spot. I'd love to get like two more enchants in the Invis Charm right now. Evil patch idea, take a page out of Grunthag's book and let zombies zombify lesser monsters on the level. Oh jeez. That could be good for the player if enemies are wasting a lot of their turns. Yo, how easy would this seed be so far if we took the, the Firebolt staff? I feel like every situation we run into is solved by Firebolt. <laughs> It'd be pretty good at the very least. I don't know, I'm still having fun with this. So what turn is it? Should have one, maybe two charges of obstruction. I think the Blade Master is the biggest, the bigger threat here. I'm probably gonna obstruct you. Do I incinerate another zombie? I don't even know what to do to this guy.
Man, they're tanky. Even a sneak attack doesn't do that much. I pretty much need to use Invis here. Potions of Incin don't seem to get much play on later deaths. I mean, they're good for, like, Revenants, right? I also like them for, like, Centaurs or, like, anything that's in, like, a, a grassy area. Maybe, like, a pack of Ogres on grass. Like burn, make, being able to burn things is pretty valuable. I guess Invis against a zombie is pretty awkward too because the zombie will... You'll both be nauseous, which kind of screws up the... the hit trading that you do. Incineration pots deal damage on hit or just set on fire? I think they just set stuff on fire. Because it, it doesn't blow up like on an, an, an enemy. It blows up like in front of it. Or next to it or whatever. Ooh, I'm going to have to hit this Cossack Gas Trap. And it's going to be a lot harder to run out of it this way. Do you get revealed in Steam or Gas while in Viz? That's a good question. I don't know if the player does. If I step on this, the gas will start burning too. Which might be better than running out of caustic gas. If we just take a few turns of burn damage instead of like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine turns of caustic gas damage. Which is like two thirds of our health. All right, I like this. The dar won't come to me. Oh, and since the gas is burning, it's not expanding as fast. That worked pretty well. And I think the zombies took some caustic damage there too. Their health is a lot lower than it should be. Dar's gonna see me soon. Do I preemptively obstruct? Probably. I actually probably wanna search this side of the level. Yeah, Invis is ready, but I need to I need to let them see me and then I go invis. Okay, he's hunting now. Uh, I think I played that a little incorrectly, but this is okay. Wait, do they never break line of sight like this? I don't know how to use Invis. I guess because he was always on a vertical and chasing me diagonally, you have to you can't use it when they're vertical with you at all. I thought it might break um, if you walked away diagonally still. Well, that was a waste of one of my only resources. That was awkward though, because if I used Invis while I was wandering, I probably don't get close enough to it to actually get a sneak attack. Oh, I was supposed to give it a free attack on me and then start moving on the diagonal. I think that's how you were supposed to play that. Shoot. Well, now I know. But also now I have a freaking Blade Master to deal with.
I think we obstruct. And this at stealth range to one, you lose aggro when you're three times away. But every turn you're one tile away, which I think counts if you're diagonal and keep moving back on a diagonal, they have a chance to um, turn to wandering. Right? So like, Let's illustrate this. By the way, where do you think we are on this chart right now? Probably like here. I, I think our chart for this charm is a little different, though. Because I think we're actually already on the up. Slightly. So this probably does something like this. I don't know if it goes up or down from there, though. Or, and I was hoping for the ceiling of Obstruct and Viz, finding the floor section. I know, right? Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay, well, if we have... Actually, let's do this like this. No, I can't do this like this. Um, okay, let's just do it like this. Drawing the, the grid. Just like the actual game. Someone should make a, a roguelike where the the grid sizes aren't perfect, even though like mechanically they function the same. You just gotta, or maybe if like you get like um, like drunk in the game, the grid sizes like warp a little bit. All right, so if we're like here, and the oh, no. We're blue. And the enemy is here. I think every turn we move back diagonally. This gap is created before the enemy moves. And I think they have to pass a stealth check or whatever you want to call the check uh, after your turn before theirs to see if they switch back to wandering so i think if they're on a diagonal like this well no that doesn't apply because the same thing would have worked on my 
when I was above them too. I, I, regardless, I think moving away while you're diagonal. I'm pretty sure moving like this gives them a chance of dropping AI, dropping hunting AI. Oh my god, transparent selection. You're teaching me some serious uh, paint tricks here. You're not convinced? Xylan, I drew it in paint. What more do you want? Yeah, I'm not that sure either. I thought I've used invisibility when adjacent to a monster before and gotten out of it. Asylum not convinced because the art is bad. <laughs> Alright, we we can't all be as good as art at art as Xylan. Alright. I, I'm almost like positive that if I went back through like the VOD of this run so far, we'd see an example where the diagonal movement worked. Cause I, cause we've done that before. Oh, so this sucks. Actually, is this okay? We might get a free attack on the, the Blade Master. I could also just try and re-obstruct after moving down a turn. Wiki says a monster that is hunting for you will lose track of you if they are further away than triple your stealth range or more than two spaces of invisible. Yeah, we know that part. You know for certain if there's already a gap and you move diagonal, there's a three tiles away. So if already on adjacent, you should at least roll the 3%. Oh, that's the other thing. Is it only 3%? That, that's probably not a good enough of a chance for it to make a difference. I was thinking it was better than that. Because when we have 12 turns of invisibility, we can't really roll 3% that many times. I guess we can take better advantage of that with the spear, though. I'm gonna We're going to have to rethink how I'm using, using this. Oh, you... Jerk. How did you do that? What kind of maneuver was this? Blinking out of the crystal? That's a thing? And you swapped back to hunting just to do it? Wow, how rude. Well, now what? They did study the blade. Do I obstruct again? I don't like my position now for obstruction. I would have rather like use it again there. All right. Eh, we don't have obstruction. I thought that might be the case, but at least I know now. That means we teleport. We pray there aren't bog monsters in here. Try to kill with the life pot back up. Nah, I don't like how the odds of that play out. Because we're already low health. So after taking like one hit, we have to use our life pot, and then we probably take like we end up at half health again. If we had full health, we can we can take rolls like that with a life pot back up. You think we don't fight well enough? Oh yeah, our unenchanted war pike is only good for sneak attacks. I'm not using I'm not using invisibility charm aggressively enough before seeing an enemy. Especially now that I, you guys shed some light on the 
the crude grid drawing I just did, I think I just learned a bit about how it works and I had some some misinformation in my head. So I think I know a little bit better how to use Invisibility Charm right now. Um, oh yeah, we still get Strength Penalties. We do. So it's like really bad right now. I'm not willing to enchant it though, because we have to, we want to get Invis Charm up to like plus 13 or 14, I think. We're just going to take like every scroll we get. Oh, also I have my Splint Mail on, which is really bad for fighting anything right now. I completely forgot about that. We should put the Bandit back on. Further than three times stealth, it will lose aggro. If hunting and further than one time stealth, there is a 3% chance it will lose aggro. If within stealth radius and not already hunting, the odds of them noticing you are 25%. Dude, that 25% feels like 100% of the time this run. Everything's been waking up like on the turn where I could have sneak attacked it. And this turn without blinking is challenging. Yeah, blinking would be pretty good for this. We're, we're kind of holding out for like a blinking or a haste charm or something. Although I would need like a plus three haste charm for it to like have any value. Um, the invis charm was like completely speculative. Dude, why are you hunting me? <laughs> why? <laughs> oh my god. I can't shake this, dude. Yeah, 25%. That's right. <laughs> Trigger the trap? I considered it. I, I'm probably a little paranoid about... Paralysis traps after my last run. Because if he's on the exterior of the cloud, then he loses paralysis faster than I do. But if he remains in paralysis after the gas fades away long enough for my gas to go away, so I don't know if that matters or not. Does tricking the trap do anything? I guess it resets him to wandering when we're both unparalyzed. But also, it means more time on the level. It buys us time to recharge stuff. Step on it, there may be just a bit that goes through the door and affects just him. But he's on the doorway, right? That can't work. And he's gonna he's gonna blink at us next turn, the turn I step on it. Oh, I see what you mean, because the vent is outside the room. Okay, no, no, you guys okay, I see what you're saying. I was thinking it would originate at the trap for a second. There's definitely more vents, and there's probably one in the room. I see exactly what you guys are saying now. Um, it's only been 70 turns since I tried to use obstruction. We probably don't have obstruction still. Resetting with invisibility would be nice because we'd end up with more obstruction and our invis charm recharged, but also. It's risky. We have about nine turns till Invis comes back. I think I'm supposed to try to obstruct this guy. I do have my banded mail on, so our armor's better. Doesn't help us that much though. I can't believe this guy is hunting us again. And 
I'm still low health from the last encounter with this nerd. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm supposed to try to obstruct. Okay, still out of charges. Do I just use my last teleport charge? What could Cyan be? Rounded paralysis, descent, and creeping death. Probably have detect magic here. They're most likely to detect magic. That's what I'm kind of guessing they are, but it could be anything. Speed would be pretty sweet if I had to invis up. Speed isn't that helpful against a blade master though, because they blink. Not quite as helpful. It is if I just wanted to go ham on them with my spear. Throw detect magic in his face. <laughs> I think I used my last teleport charge. Then I don't have any teleport, which is like a fantastic resource. I could roll the dice with our potion of life. I'd rather save that for like an invis charm mishap. Part of me wonders if stepping onto the paralysis trap works here. We both get paralyzed. And generally, if something else sneaks up on us, we only spend, we get attacked one turn and then we wake up. Unless it's like that Revenant last game where I'm in the cloud and they're not for like a hundred turns. It's a risky play, but I feel like we only have like Risky or high cost plays left. I seriously wonder if that is a reasonable, or maybe what I wonder if it's less risky than I think it is. The self paralysis. I don't know. I feel like I'm just not comfortable enough with paralysis to like attempt that, but I feel like it could be like a good move. There's para out here, so nothing's gonna come from this door if I do step on the trap. It'd really just be this door. You have a teleport charm charge left? I know. With our luck, he's just gonna appear in another 10 turns and we're still gonna have no resources to deal with him. Man, tough, tough choices. I I'm leaning towards self-paralysis. I just don't know if it's a good move or a terrible one. Also, I wonder how long paralysis takes to dissipate in this room with two closed doors. Does it last a very long time? Hmm. It's not particularly dense. I can also just lure this guy away until my charm recharges. I guess that doesn't help though, because we're going to be adjacent to him, which we found out is not helpful for that. It's not dense. Let's try it. I I'm I'm on board. Oh. Well, this is a development. We might be able to stay out of the cloud. Wait, is he going to get in the cloud? I think we take a hit or two here. No, this doesn't work. 
We need denser paralysis gas. Can't believe that didn't work. After all that thought. Well, I have Invis. Dude, there's another freaking Blade Master out here. Oh my god. Okay. Teleport you. If this guy is hunting. Oh my god. Why? <laughs> Not enough weapon enchants is the problem here. Well, I mean, yeah, enchanting a weapon early and taking the Firebolt staff was like the consistent easy play for this run the whole time. We intentionally took the, the higher risk, higher reward play. If we had enchanted Warp Pike, we'd be like wrecking shit right now. I haven't seen an invisibility charm since I started playing Brogue again. Actually, I never saw one before that. So I wanted to experiment with it. You know what I was supposed to do? I was supposed to use the invis charm when I backed up here. On the other side of the door. That was a mistake. So where does that leave us? I'm out of, like, resources to deal with this thing. I still don't have obstruction. Probably. Actually, I have to have obstruction by now. Wait, why didn't I have obstruction a turn ago? My last four uses were on five, 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 seven. Oh, that's less than a... Th okay, that makes sense. Not a fan of how both your wands are unidentified. Blind zap somewhere could have made sense. Yeah, I feel like I have to use my wands right now. Although, my wands aren't necessarily useful right now. Not when he's hunting and two tiles away from me. Slowness, negation... Are both pretty good here. That's probably it. Yeah, I was thinking about going back into the trap. I don't know the best way to use the trap. Because the gas doesn't actually get to the trap, so I'd have to step into... And I can't step into the gas, because I might end up in a tile where I'm in the gas, but it doesn't expand onto his tile. Yeah, negate isn't great at this point. I can't believe I misused my invisibility charm again. I'm, I'm not using this enough. I was supposed to use it here. And now it's too late to use it. The invisibility charm would have made this a comfortable fight. Try the potion. And hope for what? Paralysis? None of these potions are that good, I don't think. Maybe I lure him. I can't get out of the room and throw something onto here with that door. 
wonder if I pull him onto one of these tiles and then throw something onto the paralysis trigger. Use a life potion to maneuver. I probably have to eat one, two, at least two hits. Probably like three hits. That's not bad. Maybe we try. So now I use life. Why is he not paralyzed yet? Will he be paralyzed after this turn? Or can he like blink out of this still? Now he's paralyzed. Got him. Oh my God. So far, so good. I think I need to use telepathy soon. Oh my god, one more enchant scroll would be epic. I feel like we're due for one. Maybe not. How many enchants have we had? Four, five? Five by death, eleven? That's about average, maybe slightly on the low end. Can't say anything about five by eleven. Yeah, that's how I, I agree. More incineration. Okay. Okay. So this Dar is wandering. Here's what we do. We create space. Oh look, this one probably isn't hunting us. At least he's not explosive. I lost a run to an explosive Dar recently. Oh, those are... enemies. He's now a shaman. <laughs> From a master of blades to a master of spells. Rare mutation that turns into two ogres. So I think we invis here. And walk the heck away. Yeah, you guys go down there. Okay. All right, we're gonna we're we're done with this floor. I'm gonna trigger the trap on the way out. Is it even necessary? They're not going to bother us by the time I get to the stairs. If something did come up behind us, the trap was a great option. Okay. Man, this game is stressful. I need to keep checking my auto path to see where the 
tile priority is, but I don't actually want to use it. I want to walk manually. Oh my God, we were off of that floor. What kind of hell are we going to find on this floor? I feel like I should drink telepathy. Does telepathy feel good here? I feel about, I feel like using potions of telepathy, which are really valuable late game, we're trading away like all of the the ceiling that we we were hoping they gained by using invisibility. But also, I think it's the thing that's going to make us survive. All right. Enchant scroll. Um, drink from the stack. Uh, yeah. Easy telepathy high roll. I know, right? Is it sleeping? Nice. Nailed it. So the two stack... God, paralysis would suck while telepathy, though. You think you would have called this a bad telepathy timing? Yeah, I guess I'm not use used to using telepathy this early. I feel like I've pretty much always saved them for um, below the amulet, where there's plenty of wandering monsters. So I'm not used to having like low value sleeping floors like this. And you're right, we only have one wandering monster. I was hoping it would map the floor a lot better. Grab scroll and dive? Well, we might have descent. Speaking of maybe having descent. Oh, that's two enchanting scrolls. Oh, this floor is epic. Yeah, I think it was good for safety, Xylan. So if I know where two enchanting scrolls are on this floor, I don't need to YOLO potions right now. Redetect magic. I wish I could step onto this tile right now. Try jumping. I do wonder if this wraps around to the bottom. Do we incinerate another zombie? I kind of just want to obstruct him and walk by, but my obstruction charges are low-ish. This is where Shattering Charm is good. Oh, we have Invis. So I can actually just walk by the zombie. Struct and walk by is really RNG too. I could invis and walk by, but I probably end up getting nauseous by doing that. Is obstruct and walk by really RNG? It's gonna at least cover these tiles. I guess there's a slim chance. Like, one fades away, like, immediately. But with a slash four wand, I feel like we generally get coverage here and enough turns to walk past.
getting a path. I feel like if it does expand to this tile, then these tiles fade away before these tiles still. I don't know. You probably use obstruction more than me, but I feel like it's decent here. Probably take a few steps. It's hunting now. And then I swap to... Eh, maybe obstruct now. I'm going to use obstruction. Oh, we have a big obstruction now. I see what you guys are saying. Why is this tile not obstructed? That's a weird tile. I thought this would normally go like one or two tiles shorter. Oh well. I'm actually okay with this obstruction, except for the fact that it kind of wastes our telepathy a bit, but wasting our telepathy also means recharging obstruction more. I guess our invisibility was already charged. That's just an awkward situation all around. Is there a, a world where jumping into the chasm is a good move? And we assume it's more likely for the exit to be on this side of the map. We come back up over there. I don't think that's a great option. As the game semi simulates time on lower floors of dipping down for one turn and going back up to finish your current floor. Yeah, I think sleep only... They don't go out of sleep unless you're in vision, I believe. Or if you like interact with them somehow. So I don't think spending time on a, going down to a floor matters at all. Don't jump down from the enchantment floor. Yeah, I guess the play for that would be to hope that the exit is like right here and pop back up. Spending time on the floor itself will wake up dragons. So it'll wake up anything. Hmm. All I have is anecdotal evidence from not highly observant play, so. The zombie's wandering again. Now it's hunting. Do I fight the zombie or not? I guess we don't have a lot of choices. And there goes the Invis Charm. This is what incineration potions are for, right? Oh, I'm vomiting in fire. Okay, whatever. Stop vomiting so much, sir. I guess this didn't work that well, did it? So I've used three life potions. I have 60 health and I'm about half. I probably have about 35 health right now. So if I step under this grass, I lose about half of my health to burning. Probably about 20 by the time I step on this grass. The zombie has much more health. Than I guess that was a terrible move, actually. Was I supposed to roll for obstruction again? I didn't have a lot of outs. That zombie was in a terrible spot for like any of our resources. Hmm. I think I'm supposed to run for the choke point and then hope I have obstruction.
Should have backed off, then incinerated from a distance. Well, I couldn't because I was being hunted, right? And also, I rolled really... Well, I, I rolled poorly for vomiting after the zombie. Also, hey, what's up, TME? If either one is slow... Yeah, I don't know where I can test the wand yet. I haven't had any since we talked about it on the last floor. Yeah, I don't have obstruction. Oh my god. The vo Oh my god, I'm losing so many turns. We just died. GG. Dude, I, I low rolled vomiting with this encounter so hard. What is the, the chance? I thought it was 50%. Yeah, I've identified fire immunity. Yeah, I think the, in hindsight, well, it's easy to say in hindsight, but um, the incineration potion was a mistake, but also I don't think that kills us a lot of the time. Maybe it does. It's been a bad series of events. Unidentified scrolls. I don't have any scrolls in inventory. The fire kills us from this point no matter what. Like, like there's literally nothing I can do to survive this. Because of my, I'm burning. But descent also kills us. Well, in, in into water, it kills us sometimes. But if we low roll the damage, that probably is the only chance. All right, let's show the potion. Speed? That would've been good 10 turns ago. There's Descent. You're damaged by the fall. And wow, we landed in a terrible position. We can write that we died on D13 on Reddit. There you go. Man, that was a... Uh... That was rough. The upstair was all the way over here. Wait, did we see the downstair? At some point? Was there a wandering monster over there when I was distracted by the zombie? How do we see it when we fell in the chasm? Does that always reveal the upstairs? What what mechanic revealed this to us? I think you only know where the upstairs is if you've seen the downstairs and the level above. You're seeing the upstairs because you're seeing the downstairs on this floor via telepathy? That doesn't make sense, right? I'm not sure what's revealing this. I don't think there's anything wandering over there. Alright, so let's think about our run here. Upstairs always revealed when falling. 
Damn, if I knew that, I probably would have chasmed before. So, you guys have to wait for the wands. Um, what was I supposed to do on the last floor with that zombie? I don't think invisibility helped there. Because we get stuck in the... We walk past through the not... Um, the nauseous gas. We get past the zombie, but we're nauseous. Maybe that's better. I don't like our obstruction roll. I feel like at least half the time we get a better obstruction roll. Would have tried using the net trap on it. If we were going to force an engagement, you're probably right. Or after I woke it up post obstruction and it was wandering, I should have lured it to the net trap. That might have been better. Incinerate. Yeah, I. The thing with incineration is I didn't want to have to wait for incineration to kill it because zombies take forever to kill with incineration. Yeah, enchanting the invis charm didn't work well that run. Although, I'll say this. So outside of that situation, what I can learn from this whole game, and I would have never learned any of this if I didn't play a run where I tried enchanting invisibility. So that's why I did it. My The phase I am in Brogue right now, I'm all about experimenting with stuff. I'm intentionally making plays that I don't think are good most of the time. And I wasn't supposed to bring that into the weekend contest. But the last two weeks... That is to say, every week except for the first one I've played so far, this is only my third one, I've decided to do something that I was uncomfortable with. So I guess we're just going to do that all the time and not care about trying to like win every run. Because I'm not really interested in playing a type of build that I played before and I know how it plays out. So that, that makes sense. And I don't have to punish myself by doing weekend contests like that. But, um... So with Invisibility Charm, I wasn't using it proactively enough, and for like 80% of that game, until like the last half of Floor, maybe, which is more than 80% actually, I didn't really understand completely how Invisibility worked and how we should be using it. If we played this seed again, without like, without having like map knowledge, but just like, if we, if we played another seed that had an Invis Charm, an Obstruction Staff, and a War Pike, I think we get through a lot of these encounters without using as many resources, just because I understand how Invis works better and how we should be using it better. And then we have more obstruction charges and maybe more useful potions for this point in the game, and we probably get a little bit deeper. Very hard to make it work enchanting from the outset, much easier to commute. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, and I agree with that. I think like the, the best path for any run in Brogue is enchanting a big weapon and then commuting onto like a high value charm or staff or ring later. And and what that does, that's a twofold thing where you end up swapping from a weapon based build, which isn't great past the amulet deaths into a build that can work past the amulet deaths. And also if you enchant a weapon from the get go, you don't need resources. The weapon carries you. So you end up with a stockpile of good potions. You don't always get a, a commute, so it, it, it's a risky play, like Karaspace um, just said. They're not terribly uncommon, though. An awkward seed for enchanting weapon. Um, yeah, it, it, it was a little awkward for that. Um, a late detect magic seed? Which is always a little awkward, too. Need another Invis Charm run for studying purposes? Yeah, I'll do another one. I, I learned a lot about the Invis Charm. This was a valuable run. Um, oh, I wanted to pull something up. Hang on. Dude, if we got to those two scrolls, I think we were going to be in a, a really good position, though. Because we've had like a 50 turn recharge on our our charm. Oh my god, it would have been 
So nice. Wait, can you guys see that? You can, right? Why is that? That was weird. Studio mode, what are you doing? I, I feel like we were, we were like down here. We were on the verge of greatness. So pretty close. Didn't show inventory. Doesn't it show us now? Was I supposed to hit I on the last screen? My bad. I don't I don't know how this works. I actually haven't died a lot and broke since I started playing again. Not in a position where I I died early and wanted didn't know what my inventory was. Salt mines? I know, we need to name all the parts of that chart. It's okay, let's pull up uh oh my god, I gotta pull up the replay now. Um Invis, War Pike, D13, Death. I don't really have a naming convention for those yet. All right. Um... So that was just a plain banded mail. Wait, this isn't this hasn't ID'd everything. How does omniscience work? Um negation domination. These ones are kind of crappy, aren't they? We never had Detect Magic. Didn't I have one more potion? I guess not just those two. Wow, this is a tough seed in general. Wait, so how do I see what these ar armors are? Oh my god, an ally zombie sounds awful, Xylan. Just follows you around and keeps you both nauseous. They're all plus zero? Okay. Didn't someone say the splint was plus four, or was that somewhere else? If you recognize your build was crappy earlier, the only way out was to put two enchants into the pike. Yeah, what an awkward seed. I wonder what else was on this seed. Should we, t we gotta take a look at how everyone else did, right? I, I actually wanna start another run. I don't have like a ton of time here. I think it'd be fun to get another run started for like an hour or two. A plus four splint on D6. Wait, what was on D6? There was a treasure room up there I missed? Did I miss this room? Wait, how did I miss this? This is where we got the warp pike, right? Hang on. Did I go in there? Oh, I missed the room. Hang on, did I search here? I 
I searched right here. Where's the door? That's in search. Um, that's in line of sight for searching, right? But probably not within the highest tier. It's like six tiles away. I don't know if you can see that from here or not. Dang. It's within range. Uh, so how do the ranges work? What what are the the distances and the chance of finding a secret door or a trap? Huh. I'm just curious if I missed that by like a 10% chance or, or something. I actually wish um, searching, if you do the full search, was more deterministic. And We were talking about this last run. Instead of being like a small chance that you like don't find something on the ground. Because it's definitely not worth searching twice like everywhere in the run. Also, there are epic items later. Okay, let's take a look at um, the Reddit thread. All right. All right, let's see how other people did in the contest. Dude, plus four splint is pretty nuts. Although it probably doesn't help our invisibility build. That was, was that a little too speculative? I guess it was. That's the the risk of taking like making speculative picks. I, I think we could have done pretty well if I if I played that through again, knowing what I know now, though. Because we, we would have made it to those two enchant scrolls, and then if we had that thing down to a 50 turn recharge rate with with a slash four obstruction staff, I, I think that would have been pretty cool. We had a 90% chance of discovering that door. Feels bad, man. 10% low roll, buddies. That's too bad. Um, okay, I'm, hang on, I'm pulling this up. Where's my browser capture? Okay, here's the thread. Large search strength is 160%. You lose 10% per step. So six steps takes you down to 90%. Oh, interesting. That's pretty simple. And that's just how search works in CE, right? That's different than 175. And how do individual searches work? Because they're like separate? Where's all that in the code? I can probably look at that on my own later, but. So if I, if I was one tile closer, it would be 100% range. Interesting. That's actually really helpful. Because searching like every five tiles or so becomes a legit strategy. Although you might still stretch it out to like six or seven tiles, knowing that you'll search some tiles twice. Search strength mechanics are the same, but what searches are performed different between CE175? Every 10 tiles. But if you're searching every 10 tiles, that means you walk five tiles into unexplored territory. So if you want to avoid traps, that's not always the best. And CE short searches are 60% strength. 
60% to find a tile? Or 60% of 160? Oh, it must be the latter, right? Or the former. 60 overall points. Interesting. This is actually really good information. I could definitely play smarter knowing how these things work. Manual search power is the same regardless of the floor. Yes, with the caveat that on later floors, you might not be able to see more than a few tiles away. Uh, yeah, you're right, Jonadab. For searching for secret rooms, um, every 10 tiles would definitely be the optimal way. So the 60% chance, or 160, is the tile you're on. The adjacent ones are 10% lower. Interesting. That's all really good. I appreciate you uh, pointing that out. We should get that information onto the wiki somehow, if it's not already. I don't think it is. I looked at the search page before. Uh, actually, no, that might have been the awareness page I was looking at. That's really valuable information. Um, search in movement. Oh, and yeah, because then you have a chance of seeing stuff when you move. All right, Tiny Rodent, one with two Lumen Stones and a plus 13 Warp Pike. Banded Mail of Respiration. Wow, that's a cool find. Thought they could easily grab some stones, but I got into trouble. Use their only teleport scroll to escape. Ooh, teleporting while in trouble on a Lumen Stone death is sketchy. Well, maybe not death 27. They reflected themselves with a gold. Now, that was tough. Xylon got got by a goblin. Hallucinating. Centipede. Oh, that was in the same death that we fought the centipede, isn't it? GJ starved to death on D24. What did you play? Oh, post amulet. Oh, that is rough. I died like that once, but I didn't have much food grabbing the amulet. I died on D26. Didn't identify detect magic until you use every other potion first. Yeah, it looks like we were um, in that direction too. Oh, you did the same thing with Invisible Obstruction. Although I'm guessing that you didn't enchant the Invis Charm if you're t playing for commutation here. Oh, you went all in on obstruction? Interesting. Are pretty heavy on it at least. Oh, are you dark into two's island? Dark into hallucinating? Yeah, that was tough. I'm glad we could share that pain. Oh, Arch 2? Okay. A lot of people did that. Killed by a Dar in Death 11. Oh. Been close to that. Damn, minus three banded. So this guy die with like a bunch of enchant scrolls in inventory. It's always tough. I 
Apgov escaped. Plus 11 Warpike. I'm dead immunity. A whip? I wonder what the whip was. Finding the enchant scroll upon ascension in a secret room. That's funny. How do you even do that? I guess if you're diving, you identified a secret door without searching. Damn, Zen going big with the 11 Lumen Stones. There was a whip of dragon slaying? Oh, man. Hold up. Respiration, dragon slaying. Imagine if we made it deeper and ended up with like a super highly enchanted invis charm, a decent obstruction staff. Respiration and dragon slaying is like an insane build. Yeah, dragon slaying, respiration, invis build. Yeah, and someone said Chainmail of Invis Immunity. That makes you immune to like... Well, you're not immune to dragons with the whip. But you kill every dragon while invisible. Oh my god. Was there a commutation altar in this build? I don't think I saw anyone mention it yet. Chanting a Firebolt Staff. I don't know if enchanting a firebolt staff without having like a ring of wisdom or, or something else to to push you in that direction is probably correct. Um, you can get forced to doing that though. No commutation. Yeah, so pumping enchants into the war pike and then commutating that onto like the invis charm or something is like the highest ceiling. Yeah, slash four does. Firebolt does sound pretty good, I guess. I, I like Firebolt a lot. I've been pretty comfortable with that slash three in a lot of my runs lately. Um... Floor 16 with a plus 6 warp pike and plus 5 splint mail. Just found detect magic. Huh. Interesting seed. So it sounds like we did a... Uh, get a high... Um, what should I call it? A high... We, we chose pretty good with the invis charm for the high ceiling. With all that other stuff. Shout out to Tone Hack. Oh, did someone say that? Nice. Oh, that's you, Arch. That's awesome. I appreciate it. I'm glad. I'm glad we can all learn together and get better at this game together and have fun doing it. Um. Well, it's getting a little late here, but I feel like I'd like to. Maybe start that um, empowerment seed we I teased earlier. Maybe just run it for an hour or two. It, it's hard to just put down a game of Brogue, especially losing like that. Like you, you always want to dive right back into it. Brogue has the best, the best early game out of any rogue like I've played. I think new players, experienced players alike, like the early game of Brogue is so enjoyable. Be and it's because of all the items you get and how important the decisions are that you can make in the early game, how difficult it is past the first like two or three floors um, and how you, you, you make these big decisions. I, I love the early game of Brogue.